In this video, we're going to look at solving simultaneous equations where one is linear and one is not. This is question number four. We're asked to solve the following simultaneous equations. So in A, we've got equation one is x plus y is equal to three and equation two x squared minus y squared is equal to 21. This is linear and this is not. In the last video, we had y expressed in terms of x. This time, we're going to have to rearrange and make a substitution. So, on equation 1, I'm going to now rearrange this. I can write that this is going to be x is equal to 3 minus y, or y is equal to 3 minus x. It really doesn't matter, it's entirely up to you. What I'm going to do is make x the subject, x is equal to 3 minus y. And that is equation 1. I'm now going to make this substitution into equation 2 to eliminate x. So I've got x squared. Well, that's going to be 3 minus y, which we need to square, minus the existing y squared, and that will be equal to 21. So we can see now that the second equation, equation 2, is all in terms of of y. Okay, so let's expand the brackets. We're going to have 9 minus 6y plus y squared minus y squared is equal to 21. So this is equation 2. From here, I can see now that the y squareds are going to cancel. So I'll have now minus 6y or negative 6y subtracting 9 from both sides is equal to 12. Dividing both sides by the negative 6, y is equal to negative 2. So those squared terms cancel out. y is equal to negative 2. We need to go ahead and solve for x. Well, x is equal to 3 minus y. So we can say that x is going to be 3, subtract negative 2, and x is going to be equal to 5. So that's what we end up with. Nice and straightforward, nice and logical. So that's the first one done. Now you might have said, well, there are different ways of doing that. There certainly are. What I could have done if I really wanted is written equation 2 as y squared is equal to x squared minus 21. So x squared minus 21. I could have written here now for equation 1 that y was equal to 3 minus x. Therefore, we can say squaring both sides, y squared is going to be 3 minus x all squared. At this stage, I could have set these equal. x squared minus 21 is equal to 3 minus x all squared, which would give me 9 minus 6x plus x squared. And we can see from here now that we're going to have, if I do some rearranging at this point, we're going to have now that 6x, so writing this down, 6x will be equal to 30. So putting that 30 and x is going to be equal to 5 as we saw before. And we can simply substitute that in now to find y. Lots of different approaches, loads of different ways, entirely up to you. Right, let's look at the next one. This one just here. x plus y is 3 again, and x squared plus y squared is equal to 5. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sketch this. This is uh, quite an interesting one. So let's just, in fact, we'll go for, let's have that. This is a straight line and a circle. You might have already met a circle, but if not, you will in a, late, a later unit. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be my circle, and what we're going to have then is the following. So this is a circle, center 0, 0, and the radius is going to be root 5. What we're going to have here now is y is equal to 3 minus x. So if I just put that on, that's going to be a straight line, and it's going to do something, give or take, Not that's not massively accurate, but something like 
this. So what we'll have, let's just put that on. Uh, we'll say, in fact, it'll be there. There we go. Something like that. That's going to be a rough thing. So what we'll have, we'll have a point of intersection just here and we'll have a point of intersection just here. So this is going to be y is equal to 3 minus x or x plus y is 3. It really doesn't matter. And this is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 5. We weren't asked to do this, but I think it will just add to uh, what's, what's going on here. OK, now, what I'm going to do at this stage is simply make y the subject of equation 1. So y is going to be equal to 3 minus x, and that is equation 1. Therefore, equation 2 is going to become x squared plus, then we're going to have y squared. Well, that's going to be 3 minus x all squared, and that's going to be equal to 5. That is equation 2. So what I'm doing here is substituting in now that y is equal to 3 minus x. This is going to give me a quadratic equation in x. So we're going to have x squared plus 9 minus the 6x plus x squared is equal to 5. So rearranging, we've got 2x squared minus 6x. Then we're going to have on here plus 4 is equal to 0. We can divide through by 2. x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. That looks like it'll factor x minus 1, and we're going to have now x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 2. So at this stage, all we need to do is find the y-coordinate. So when x is equal to 1, y will be equal to 3 minus 1, which is going to give me 2. We can say when x is equal to 2, y is going to be 3 minus 2, which is going to be 1. So what we have are the points just here. So we have now on here, x is 1, y is 2. So let's put that just here. So this point right here, x is 1, y is 2. And this point just here now, that x is going to be 2 and y is going to be 1. As stated, not a massively accurate sketch, but we've got the intersection of a line and a circle. We've solved simultaneously by substituting in and going ahead and solving as stated, lots of different approaches. You could have made x for subject. x would be equal now to, on here, we would add, uh, instead of 3 minus x, we would have 3 minus y. We could have substituted that in to get a quadratic in y, and then simply solved from there. Right, okay. Now let's have a look at the next one. x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 6, and y minus 3x is equal to 5. If we look ahead at this one, we've got x squared and then 2y squared. I think the easiest thing for me to do is to write that equation 2 is going to be y is equal to 3x plus 5 and substitute that in. So if I just put this on, I'll put equation 2, we can write this as y is equal to 3x plus 5. You could, of course, have made x the subject, but that's going to give us a fraction. If you're comfortable with working with fractions, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to do that. So equation 1 now becomes x squared plus 2 lots of 3x plus 5 all squared, and that will be equal to 6. So by making y the subject, I can substitute in, and we can eliminate the y and have an equation in x. So we can have x squared plus 2 lots of, and we need to be careful here, 9x squared plus now, that's going to give me 30x plus now 25, and that is going to be equal to 6. So what's that going to give me? 18x uh, squared, so we're going to have 19x squared plus now 60x. And then we can have plus 50 minus the 6, which is going to be, uh, what's that going to be? Plus 44 is equal to 0. So that's what we end up with. Okay, um, I'm going to use the, uh, the quadratic equation on this one. Um, so what we'll put in here, we've got A is equal to 19, B is going to be equal to positive 60, and C is going to be equal to positive 44. So using the quadratic equation, we've got now negative b, which is negative 60, 
plus or minus the square root of 60 squared minus 4 lots of A, which is 19, multiplied now by C, which is 44, all over 2 lots of A. Well, 2 lots of A is going to be 38. And that gives me now that X is going to be on here. So X is going to be equal to negative 22 over 19. And then if we put the other one on, let's go ahead and do that. So if we just delete that, we get to now negative 2. So X is equal to negative 2 or negative uh, 22 over 19. All I'm going to do at this stage is simply substitute in to find Y. So if we do now 3 lots of the negative 22 over 19, so 3 lots of negative 22 over 19, and then we're going to add to that now 5, that will give us y. So y is going to be 29 over 19. So y is equal to 29 over 19. And then this one, when we've got negative 2, that's going to give me that y is going to be equal to negative 6 plus 5. y is going to be equal to negative 1. So when x is equal to negative 22 over 19, y is equal to 29 over 19. And when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative 1. So that's one way in which you could have solved that. Often in this particular unit, you're not given a calculator. So in terms of solving that equation, it's unlikely it would come up in an exam question if you're not allowed to use a calculator. But the, the method stays the same. As stated, you could have made x the subject on equation 2. You could have said that y minus the 5 divided by 3 was equal to x and then substituted that in. Now, if you'd done that here, what you would have got now is y minus 5 all squared over 3 squared, which is going to be 9, plus 2y squared will be equal to 6. Um, at this stage, I'd multiply through by the 9. So y minus 5 all squared plus 18y squared is equal to 54. Expanding the brackets, y squared minus 10y plus 25 plus 18y squared is equal to 54. So we would have had 19y squared minus 10y. And then what's that going to leave me on there? Minus 29. So minus, what's that going to be? Minus 29. So minus 29 is equal to 0. And then we would just solve for y and plug back in for x. But as you can see, uh, it's probably slightly harder if you do it that way. It's entirely up to you. Um, but as you can see, we could just put this through the quadratic equation and solve for this. So we'd have 10 plus the square root of 10 squared minus now 4 lots of A, which is 19, multiplied by C, which is negative 29. And that's all over 2 lots of A, which is going to be 38. And we get for 29 over 19 here. And then if we swap that over for the minus... We're going to get now the negative one as expected. And then, of course, you can sub in to get x. So two different ways around doing that one, but slightly more challenging in terms of the algebraic manipulation and the solving of that quadratic. So there we go. That's what we get. Slightly more challenging. And then in the next video, we will look at some other non-linear simultaneous equations. But as stated, you pick a method, substitute in, solve for one, and then solve for the other. Don't just find X or Y, you need to solve for both X and Y.